So let's just go straight to the global virus pandemic that has added to the long list of problems that plague Zimbabwe, the South Africa's breadbasket. And three years on since President Mangagwa was enthroned, the economy is yet to fully recover from decades of crippling Western sanctions and internal mismanagement and corruption. Joining me now from Harare is Eddie Cross, economist and business analyst. It's about if. Uh, about 9.30 in the night over there, Eddie. So we appreciate you making the time for the show. Welcome. Much. Thank you very much. Uh, bring us up to speed on COVID-19 situation in Zimbabwe right now. Well, in 2020, we were relatively unaffected. Um, we seem to escape the worst of the pandemic. But since the turn of the year, uh, we've experienced a wave, second wave, and it's been quite severe. The last three or four weeks have been pretty traumatic for us. We've lost four cabinet ministers. We've lost a number of senior business people and uh, medical professionals. And uh, this particular variety of the virus seems to be more aggressive than the one we had last year. Um, but still, apart from that, uh, we're in complete lockdown. We've been in lockdown since the beginning of the year, and it's going to continue until the the middle of February. We've not yet heard what they're going to do at the middle of February, but I would hope that they'll lift some of the restrictions. I was in the centre of Harare today, uh, and uh, it was pretty much completely empty. Uh, there was no sign of, of life at all. Um, from a death point of view, I think our figures are very understated. We have about 1,500 deaths since the pandemic started. And uh, we've had a total of about 45,000 cases recorded. But I don't think we're, we are testing on any kind of significant scale. And I think that our death rate is, in fact, masked by the lack of reliable statistics. I think it's much higher than what, what's indicated by the official stats. Uh, Eddie, we're very happy that you stay safe and that you, you, you keep all the uh, safety protocols. It's good to, to, to see you uh, still there. Thank you very much. We appreciate it and we're happy to have you. But, but news reports Pleasure. are saying that the government is budgeting about 100 million US dollars to procure some vaccines. Uh, do, are you aware of this move by the Monagagua's president's uh, administration plan? Oh, yes. Uh, there was a, an, an emergency meeting of cabinet ministers about a week ago. And in that meeting, the Ministry of Finance allocated 100 million US dollars to for the importation of uh, vaccines. We've been told that uh, vaccines will be available free of charge uh, to Zimbabweans as soon as possible, beginning with essential services and key players. I would have hoped that they would have extended that to teachers as well as health workers, because I think our teaching profession of real frontline front line players, we need to get our kids back to school. What about the plan to get some vaccines supplied by China? Is that also on track? Uh, Zimbabwe has had a very long relationship with, with China, by the way. So are, are the Chinese here to help Arare? I've got little doubt that it'll be China, India, or Russia that will make vaccines available to us. Um, the Western world has not been particularly sympathetic. Last year, the IMF denied us any assistance at all for, for dealing with the COVID crisis, and I thought that was grossly unfair. They, in fact, denied us a payout of about 900 million US dollars, which would have made a big difference here. Um, but I think that it will be probably India, which will be the primary source of our, of our vaccines. I'm hearing of relatively low charges, about $2.50 to $3 uh, per vaccine shot, which is way below what the Western companies are demanding. So I think that is the route we'll go. Uh, uh, President uh, Mnagwagwa came into office three years ago and he says uh, uh, Harare, Zimbabwe is open for business. So uh, how is the administration handling the economy so far? And we thought that by now, situation of thin sanctions would have fall between Harare and, and the Western Hemisphere economies. Why are things still a bit tight? Well, we're still, the sanctions regime against Zimbabwe has not been altered at all. There's been no relaxation. Um, we are hoping that the Biden administration is going to review its position. And we've had indications from senior uh, officials in the new administration that this will be the case. 
But Britain, for example, just last week imposed sanctions directly on four of our senior people here. And I thought that was a very negative signal. I didn't appreciate that at all, neither did my colleagues. But, um, but in fact, the Zimbabwean economy has begun to expand quite rapidly. Uh, the last quarter of last year, I think we saw very significant growth. All our fundamentals are now sound. Mnangagwa has done a great job, in fact, in, in, in correcting many of the imbalances which we inherited from Mugabe. When uh, he came to power, we had a 40% budget fiscal, fiscal deficit that's been dealt with. We had an overvalued currency. We now have a currency which is floating freely. We don't have any shortages. Uh, pretty much ev all, everything is now in free supply, including fuel, after several years of queues. And I think these are major achievements uh, for a fledging, a fledging administration. But we're not getting any assistance or help from the international, particularly from Western nations. Uh, we look to mainly to the Far East uh, for whatever assistance is coming. And that, of course, is pretty one-sided. Um, and uh, it's not healthy for us in the long term. We need to get back into the mainstream of the international global system particularly insofar as lines of credit are concerned, and uh, because we can't finance our expansion. When, we, when our economy is growing, we need more money, and uh, that is one of our principal constraints at the moment. But you see, in the, in, in the month of January, you were commenting on the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange. Our stock exchange in the month of January has increased by 30% in US dollar terms, and it must be one of the best performing stock exchanges in the world at this moment in time. It's mainly coming from a low base, but it does reflect the underlying values and the increased confidence and the growth prospects for the country. Yes, uh, what you're talking yes, about, the financial you. markets, Eddie, uh, and that brings us back to the exchange rate and the dollar. What is the situation right now with that uh, new floating FX auction that the authorities have put in place? Uh, from all uh, reports, it looks like that seems to be working. Yes, it has been. Uh, the impact of the auction has been way beyond our expectations. Uh, it was introduced last June at the instigation of the president. Um, and uh, what happened since then is that we've seen relative stability in, this, in, in the exchange rate at around 82, 83 percent, 83 to 1. And um, I think this realistically reflects the value of the, of the, of the local dollar. And I think that's reflected in the fact that our export earnings are growing strongly. Uh, exports grew 20% last year. Our industrial exports, which is a key indicator, doubled last year. So I see that continuing in 2021. And uh, I hope that uh, we'll be able to maintain the stability on, on, on the exchange rate. It depends very much on the availability of resources for the auction. We had a bit of a blip at the beginning of the year. And uh, last week... We had to cut allocations by 27%, but on Tuesday, we were able to meet all bids in full. And I hope that that will send a strong signal to the market that uh, we're able to meet demand at this moment in time. I think we can. We've got the resources now to do so. On a final note, uh, Eddie Cross, what about the private sector, especially agriculture and mining? Well, the, the turnaround in in agriculture has been unexpected. Um, I, I personally didn't, didn't see it happening because we haven't really changed the fundamentals. We still have a problem with tenure. We have thousands of new farmers on the former commercial farms. And uh, this, is, um, not, this is not a situation that's not easy to, to, to correct. It certainly will take, take time. And um, I've got a cat on my, on my table here trying to get in on the the broadcast. <laughs> um, but um, last year, we saw about a 15, 20% increase. Um, our, our winter crop was up substantially, about uh, 100%. And we were nearly, we are nearly self-sufficient on wheat. And I see a further increase in this coming year. Our main problem remains that we can't finance the expansion of agriculture at this moment in time. We don't have adequate domestic resources. On the mining side, you, you well know from your perspective there that international commodity prices are rising. Uh, we've got high prices for nickel. Uh, copper prices are strong. Uh, plat platinum went over 1,000 uh, for the first time for some time. 
Palladium has been very strong. Palladium is very important to us. Um, gold, has, of course, has been at, at high levels for, for, for virtually a year now. And we are a major gold producer. I suspect we could become one of the biggest gold producers in the world in the next two years. Um, so mining exports are up, and, I, and, and, that, and we can see it. I mean, uh, Zimtat's turned in a, a very, very strong result for this, this, this last year. Mm. Making a quarter of a billion dollars on nine hundred million dollars of turnover. Quite How many mining work, companies yeah. in the world can report that? Yes, quite a whole lot, a whole lot of work going down there in, in Zimbabwe. Thank you so much, uh, Eddie Cross, for uh, speaking with us uh, tonight. Economist and business analysts, do have a pleasant evening and enjoy the rest of the night. Thank you so much.